Greetings, everyone. Welcome to October season of the WCEG Network on the WCEG Talk Radio. We're the Worldwide Community Empowerment Group where we speak life into the community. I am Dr. Babs, your physician and founder of Living at Your Finest Wellness. I'm your show host for tonight on this Holistic Perspective show, and I'm joined by my wonderful colleague and friend, Dr. Gabriella Williams. She is a physician and founder of Gateway Direct Health. We are here to enrich you all with information that is not just going to be inspirational, but impactful. So, you know, we've approached this flu season, cold season, and we thought that it would be best to talk about the best practices on how to stay healthy and well during this season. So the question for the hour, what are you doing to get yourself ready for this cold season? Have you armed yourself with all the appropriate care to ensure that you can fight all the viruses, all the unnamed viruses out there? So this evening, our goal is to discuss a few things, the different cold illnesses, how can you differentiate one from the other? We're also going to talk about how to prevent and how to treat naturally. Of course, you get to speak to your doctor to you know, navigate through what it is, but naturally, how do you prepare yourself? And then we'll end with commonly asked questions. But before we get to that, please tag your friends, right? Tag your friends, let them know that we are live. You don't want to hear this information all by yourself. We are live on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, even the WCG Talk Radio Network. So. We also have an app, just in case you didn't know that. You can download that on Apple and, and just follow along. Again, we're here to make a meaningful impact so that you, you're just able to support your health and wellness goals. Now, I do have two announcements. All right, the first one is the information that we're sharing today. It's all informational, right? Educational as well. It doesn't serve as a patient, um, you know, relationship with the, with the viewers. You were not previewed to your specific needs. So you do want to consult your own doctor for your specific needs. And the second thing is that the views and opinions expressed uh, by the host or any other guest is really our own views and not of the WCG network. So I always like to start with a quote, and the one I have today is a healthy outside, right? It's that's on the inside, and that is by Robert Urich. So I want to warmly welcome Dr. Williams to the show. Can you please tell us a little bit about you and what are you doing to protect yourself? How are you advising your patients to get ready for this cold season? Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Gabrielle Williams again, and uh, thank you so much for the opportunity to be on the show. How am I protecting myself? Getting rid of the kids. Just kidding. <laughs> but the reason why I say that is because we know that when kids, people are in close proximity and are not hygiene um, mature, right? Like they don't know to um, do the correct hygiene of washing your hands, not touching your face, um, and not coughing on other people. Well, that's where these viruses and the flu and COVID bruised. And so, um, so that's what I'm trying to do. Those daycares, those schools are unfortunately are full of um, the viruses, but, um, but that, that's what we teach the kids. We teach the kids to wash their hands cough into their arm or, or just away from people. If they have a napkin, they can cough into that and throw it away. Make sure to wash their hands afterwards and not to um, stay too close to people who are sick, unfortunately, because those viruses, they, they like to hop around. They don't like to be by themselves in one person. They want to spread the love that they have. <laughs> Yeah, that is great advice. And, and not just the schools, right? Any public area. I've had so many patients that have been on the plane, right? And mm -hmm. traveling for, for uh, you know, days. And then they come back and they're like, oh, I feel like I'm coming down with something. So right. we all definitely need to guard ourselves, be very mindful. You know, it wouldn't be a bad idea to wear those masks again. I must confess, I really didn't like wearing it, but I wore it because it was going to protect me and protect others. So right. certainly, just like you mentioned with the schools, make sure that they're washing their hands, covering their nose, um, making sure that if you're sick, stay away. Don't, do not risk getting other people sick. Those are certainly 
great um, habits to, to obtain, uh, obtain and make sure that you keep them during the season. Now, I guess people will be wondering, what are some of those illnesses that happens? I mean, the most common one we hear is flu, of course, with the COVID. But are there other things that you see at your practice that you can share with us that, you know, would help um, our listeners kind of, you know, distinguish between whatever it is that is going on with them? Sure. Yeah. So um, there are thousands of viruses that cause respiratory symptoms, respiratory meaning lungs, nose, um, mouth, like sore throat. So there are multiple viruses that cause those symptoms, um, including RSV, which is respiratory syncytial virus, which typically causes um, really bad cough in kids, but we've seen in, we've seen them in adults as well. And, um, and they can sometimes, if you're predisposed, if you have a lung issue like COPD or chronic bronchitis um, or obstructive bronchitis or emphysema, RSV um, can cause damage, even though again, it's usually um, occurs in kids. And then there's like a whole host of things, that, uh, a whole host of viruses, but um, other, can, other organisms that can cause respiratory issues are like strep throat. Like that is caused by a bacterial um, bacterial infection that's usually causing sore throat. Like that's a big thing, sore throat. Um, your tonsils are inflamed and pus coming out of them. It's hard to, um, it's painful to swallow. Might have enlarged lymph nodes from strep throat. Um, other condition that can cause like the runny nose is actually allergies. So some people have really bad allergies in the spring from the flowers budding and the trees growing, but also they can happen in the in the fall um, that certain trees grow or certain plants grow um, in the fall and that can trigger allergies that kind of looks like a viral infection because it can cause runny nose, nasal congestion. So um, there are multiple reasons why we have those symptoms, but most common of course are viral infections. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, the fact that I'm so glad that you mentioned strep throat because, oh my goodness, that's, it feels like I've had it before. I don't know if you've ever had it. It felt like there was a razor blade in my throat. It was really painful. And what I usually tell you know, my patients or just family members where they think everything is strep throat. I don't know if you've ever had patients where they always say, I need antibiotics, everything is strep throat. But really mm-hmm. strep throat, the way, you know, we, we diagnose that just to your point is that you have those symptoms that you refer to. And that's usually the first thing that tends to happen. They would just have that sort of compared to allergies where it's more of runny nose, congestion, right. runny eyes. And then you have right. all that drainage and over a period of time, then they could have some soreness in the throat. Is that something that you observe as well, that right. the sore comes afterwards with right. allergies because of all the drainage. But if it's strap, that's like you wake up, you just have like, you know, the sore throat and it's painful to swallow. Right. And then you have all those, you know, painful lymph nodes. Um, there is another one that with the allergies, if it's not treated properly, that can advance to sinusitis. That means um, bacteria infection, right? A superimposed infection in your sinuses that leads to sinusitis. So it's a whole um, barrage of of illnesses that could fundamentally start as a virus, but if it's superimposed with a bacteria, then of course um, that becomes even more severe with fatigue and all the other things going on. Yeah, so I guess with everything that we said now, I, I guess our listeners would like to hear, so how can I, protect myself? How can I keep, other than, of course, the hygiene that we started off with, right? Covering your nose, right. washing your hands, staying away from public areas. Um, we definitely, you know, both of us, we practice lifestyle medicine. We're very passionate about it. We know that um, all the lifestyle habits are evidence-based, and it shows that it certainly can prevent chronic diseases. And I know we're talking more acute now, but it certainly can help to build our immune system. So what are some of your practices personally and what do you share with your patients? I know this will seem far-fetched, but making sure your sugars are in order. Yes, I'm talking to my people with diabetes. Viral infections can cause damage in patients with, or more damage, I should say, in patients with diabetes and don't, right? Like um, when COVID was at its peak, that's who we saw was predisposed to being hospitalized or increased risk um, of a bad event with COVID are people who had diabetes, who had high blood pressure, 
And so one of the ways to protect yourself during the season is to get those things under control now, like, or before, but <laughs> definitely now, like if you needed a motivation, this, now's the time now is, is the to time. get your sugars under control and get your, um, get your blood pressure under control. Yeah. Um, other things that I've seen uh, people do are take um, vitamin C. So there, the evidence is a little, I don't know, it's like not really clear or really straightforward. But before they were saying that vitamin C, if you take it before, could help with um, decreasing the, how long you've had, uh, how long you'll potentially have a viral um, infection. But it doesn't necessarily cure it, but more of to decrease the symptoms or how long that they last. Yeah, and I know um, in my Caribbean country, uh, Caribbean <laughs> culture, it's lemon, garlic, onion, cayenne pepper, and honey. You take a shot. Of that. Yeah, I have my concoction somewhere. I'm looking for yes. it because everything you said, except the lemon, is right there. I have my turmeric. Turmeric is actually mm -hmm. part of it. I don't know if you guys add turmeric, but mm -hmm. I have my turmeric, black pepper, cayenne pepper. Um, garlic and ginger. Yes. So I sprinkle it. <laughs> I walk around with it. Now with my lemon though, I mix that in my water in mm. the mornings. In my, yeah. So, but, but it, but it is real. I mean, it does help because the whole idea is that we're really trying to build our immune systems, mm. right? Trying to get those soldiers ready for war because right. they, our bodies naturally have them, but we just need to arm them. We have to give them the, you know, the strength to be able to, and, you know, speaking of strength for the soldiers, the foods that we eat matter, right? Just like you said, with the sugar, making sure that any chronic disease is well managed. It's the same thing with our, our gut. Um, our gut actually produces, I'm trying to remember how much percent, whether it's between 50 or 60% of our immune system mm -hmm. actually started in the gut. So if mm -hmm. we don't, if we have a healthy gut, our uh, gut microbiome, which we call the good bacteria, mm -hmm. if that good bacteria is not happy or pleased, then it's not going to create those soldiers and get them ready for war, meaning their immune system. So right. certainly we have to make sure that we're eating nourishing foods, the fruits, the veggies that you spoke about, the vitamin C, of course, you can get that in citrus fruits and other things. And all right. those things definitely help to build the immune system, the whole grains, the veggies, the fruits, um, the lagoons, all those things. And of course, water, you know, some people don't like water, but <laughs> that's why I put lemon in it. But just anything to make you, you know, suddenly that you, you stay hydrated. So Definitely, we talked about controlling chron um, chronic diseases. We talked about nourishing foods. Any other um, toolkit that you have to either build the immune system or just get us prepared for this cold season? Yes, making sure to rest. Oh, yes. You have to get your sleep. Don't say, oh, well, when I get, when I get sick, then I'll sleep. Uh, you start now. <laughs> you have to start now. To, okay, so... I'm really, like you said, big on lifestyle um, medicine and, you know, lifestyle medicine is self-care. It's saying that I am worth putting, um, investing the time and the knowledge to know how to take care of my body, right? Um, with or without medications. And so um, part of self-care is getting adequate rest and decreasing stress levels and being able to manage um, like our response to stress um, so that again, when we get sick, we are not in a place of um, disadvantage, right? We are, we are on top of it, like you said. Oh yes, oh yeah. You make a good point about being in a state because you know we live in a world where we have to go out, right? We're not going to stay cooked up in the house. It's cold, right. you know, flu season. We have to live life, but we have to, you know, be ready for when these viruses you know when they come because we're prepared it, it will get at us but it will slap right back just to your point and the, the way i look at it like if you look at a pendulum at the extreme right you have wellness and then the center you have your health and at the other end which is the left hand side you have you know sick so how far out you go will determine how quick you're able to bounce back. So if you're between right. that health, health where you are currently versus right. wellness, which is a dynamic, continuous, you know, state of well-being, 
then you're you're quickly to bounce back. But if you're on the other spectrum, then it takes a whole lot to right. to bounce right back. So I, I like that you definitely made that point there. Yeah, sleep is so essential. And again, with the sleep, it, a lot of immune systems are built then, right? And we help to decrease the cortisol level right. when we sleep because if we we're not sleeping, we're increasing our cortisol. So we're but he's just in that stress state. Yes. So certainly sleeping more will help for sure. Yeah. Now, what's about, what are your thoughts about just physical activity? Does that play a role at all? Are you, what, what are you telling? And the reason why I asked you this question is because I don't know if you've noticed, but I know it happens to me. I, I like to, you know, do a lot of walking outdoors and stuff, but I do not like the cold. And I, and when it comes to gearing up and wearing so many sweaters, it's a hassle. That's why yes. I don't really like the tights. I don't know if you're a tight person, but it takes too much work and time to get ready during the winter months, right? It's <laughs> extra time. So I, my excuse usually is that, no, it's too cold outside. I'm not going to mm -hmm. walk. And then before mm -hmm. you know it, you know, we're not exercising as much, even getting to the gym and running in. So I don't know, what, what are your thoughts? What do you usually say? Are you somebody that works out during the winter months, cold months? How do you tell your patients to navigate through that period? No one hates the cold more than me. So, okay. so we're in the same. I thought I was the only one because I've seen people run. And <laughs> no one hates the cold more than me. But also, though, mm -hmm. um, yes, it is great to get our exercise outside because we get our vitamin D, we get our sunlight, we get our fresh air. But if cold is a, a limiting factor, we are not going to let it stop us from getting our whole, like our exercise all together. And so mm -hmm. guess what's free? YouTube. YouTube <laughs> is free. And there are people who post like 15, 20 minute workouts that mm -hmm. you can just do several reps to and get your exercise. Yeah. Um, if you don't want to get a gym membership, you don't have to necessarily um, have to pay for one, but the community centers, I know you just have to run real quick to get inside, <laughs> but the community centers usually have um, a, um, a place where you can walk around and, you know, mm -hmm. go, uh, go around on a track for 10, 10 times and you're walking a mile. Um, but yes, physical activity has everything to do with preparing for sickness. Um, and I liken it to like, you know, um, if you're able to make sure that your baseline health is wonderful, mm -hmm. if you are hit with something, you're more than likely to bounce back faster and better. Yeah. And so that's why we, uh, Dr. Babs and I are harping on lifestyle and preparing now, being proactive now, and it does take intention. Um, it, you're not going to be healthy um, without doing any work, right? Or putting in any um, investment. And so, Yes, yeah, so physical activity, nutrition, adequate sleep, decreasing stress, those are all helpful to make sure that your baseline um, health and wellness is optimal. And so if something were to happen, you'd be able to bounce back quicker and better. Yeah, and uh, it reminds me of this quote that says, if you do not make time for wellness now, you are going to be forced to make time for the illness, right? Have you heard that one before? That if you don't make time now to be well, then it's unfortunate when you take ill, you're going to be forced to, to take care right. of yourself. So definitely right. prevention is better than cure at this point to make sure that we're well prepared. So again, just to recap and everything that we said, we already know the different cold issues that we could have, right. allergies. It could just go from allergies, pure allergies, as you beautifully said about the spring and the fall. I actually had a patient that said, never, never had issues with allergies. And then all of a sudden in the fall, she's like, what is going on? Runny nose, watery eyes. So just right. be, you know, be observant of, of how your body is changing and be aware of how you want to nip it in the butt right away. You know, don't if, if you're not feeling better, especially what we typically say and what the evidence has shown is that if the regular medications, the antihistamines, which helps with the drainage, you know, changing your filters, making sure that you wash your hands with all of that so you don't bring pollen in, mm -hmm. the usual stuff. If all of that you're doing and you're just not getting better and you're even feeling more sick, then definitely mm -hmm. you want to talk to your doctor because you might at that point need antibiotic. Of course, they have to examine you and confirm that. Right. And, you know, if we're talking about about flu, you know, it's all the symptoms and more, but feeling weak and tired. COVID has, uh, it could be non-specific, but again, most of the common things that we hear similar to the flu, but some people mm -hmm. 
a taste there, um, smell, right? right? Other unique things. Of course, you know, we have a lot of all these testings around that you want to check. So these things, just to be aware of what they are. And then we spoke about strep throat. Now, what's about pneumonia? Somebody had asked me about walking pneumonia and bronchitis. Um, certainly, one of the things that we will talk about is smoking, because if you're at risk, just as we spoke about right. diabetes and hypertension, if right. you smoke, this will be the time, just like Dr. Williams said, if there's a reason to get rid of, you know, some of those habits, and I know we're creatures of habit, so it, you definitely want to work with your healthcare provider to help you, you know, cut, reduce, and ultimately come off of those things, but I want to ask you in terms of your practice, Dr. Williams, how often do you see, like, walking pneumonia or bronchitis during this cold season? Oh, yes, I, you are totally right. That is all in the, um, I guess, in the bucket of all the things that can happen. <laughs> all the respiratory, again, the respiratory. So bronchitis is um, where there's inflammation of the bron bronchus, bronchioles, which are the um, breathing tube and stems into the lungs. So where air is coming um, into the lungs and out. And so when they ha are inflamed and have mucus in them, they can cause wheezing and just um, not really great stuff. Now, most um, actually, yeah, most common cause of bronchitis is viral infections, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what we call like maybe a lower respiratory um, yeah. infection or uh, symptom versus the upper respiratory is yeah. more the nose and uh, mouth. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so pneumonia though is bacterial infection of the lungs so that this is actually the common symptoms are fever fever persistent fever and cough uh, with viral infections you can have a fever but usually again it gets better with pneumonia because you need an antibiotic to fight off that infection the fever will persist or can persist but some people can have pneumonia for uh, a week or so and, and like just moving around, but have like some shortness of breath and maybe not realize that it's short, that they're short of breath um, and have this uh, cough. It could be productive, meaning that you cough up some mucus or it could be dry. Um, and pneumonia, you definitely need an antibiotic for that, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And I guess that takes us to, you know, some of our commonly asked questions. And I'm glad that you brought it up. When will be the indication for antibiotics, right? So it's not everyone that is <laughs> coughing that needs antibiotics, right? It is not, you know, there's usually the question, is it productive? Is it what color? Is it greenish? Is it yellow? It's really a combination of all the other symptoms, you know, if there's fever, if it's worsening. Um, so how, how do you approach that in terms of when people um, inquire and ask about antibiotics. Well, I, I think it'll be important for us to stress why everyone doesn't need antibiotics because antibiotics, right. as good as it is, it can cause some issues. So I'll, I'll let you share um, your thoughts about that. Sure. I know. Okay. I know <laughs> you are miserable. I know, guys. I know the viral infection is causing so much congestion. You can barely breathe. Um, I know that you're causing a cough that people are looking at you crazy. I know that you really want something to get rid of that. I get it. I really do. I see you and I feel you. Um, but viral infections do not and will not get better with antibiotics because antibiotics are targeting bacteria, not viruses. And so the, um, and that's one thing. Second thing is when we're giving antibiotics, that aren't indicated, that means that we're giving antibiotics for something that's not a bacterial infection, we are potentially increasing risk of um, um, drug side effects, right? So now you're taking a medication that you don't need and potentially getting the side effects from it. Like with ladies, we might get a, a yeast infection from it. For men and women, you might get diarrhea from it because bacteria is killing, I mean, antibiotics are killing bacteria and it doesn't decide if it's a good one or a bad one. <laughs> and so that can mess with our gut microbiome like you talked about. Yeah. Um, and also the third thing is when we're giving antibiotics, they're not indicated. Bacteria are very, very, very smart. Mm -hmm. They are very smart. They said, oh, this bacteria, I mean, this antibiotic, hmm, let me figure out a way for me not to be susceptible to this next time. Let me figure out a way to, to change my DNA so that if I see that antibiotic again, I'll be yeah. able to fight it and fight the body that I'm in. And so now we're having to... Uh,
because the ones that we've tried before, unfortunately, we have overprescribed them. And so they are not working as well. And so now we have to come up with more newer um, antibiotics. And so uh, now our arsenal, we're decreasing how many weapons that we have in our arsenal. And I don't wanna know what happens with other multi-drug resistant, right? That's what they're called, the bacteria when they're drug resistant. I don't want to see the day when <laughs> MRSA is resistant to the things that we've developed. You know, like you know, we 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 don't want to head that way. And so, as physicians, pharmacists, healthcare providers, we have to be and again educate, but also like recognizing it's not just for now that we're looking at. We're also looking into the future, making sure that we're protecting um, future generations. Absolutely. So yes. So well said, so well said. So I, I hope that Dr. Williams has been able to convince you in case you're listening, because believe me, I've been guilty too. I was like, um, do I need some antibiotics? I need something. <laughs> but again, you know, when we're educated, they say, well, we know better, we do better, right? So this is the reason. It's not that your doctors don't like you or your healthcare providers don't like you. It's right. just for all the beautiful, re all the reasons that Dr. Williams beautifully outlined, that's why. So we want to prescribe it when it's indicated, when it's needed. And, and so what are some of those things that you can do to minimize, you know, you know, just make you feel more comfortable. So some of the things that I recommend and I've seen very helpful for not just me and my family and my patients, is, mm -hmm. you know, a bedside humidifier. If you yes. need, you, you can ask your doctor for a bitterol just to help open up those lawns so that you're not feeling all tight, right? Um, even though this is one of the commonly asked questions, I found personally that, because I do have allergies and I, if I'm not drinking enough water or mm -hmm. if I'm eating a lot of dairy, then I have a lot of thick mucus. So you might see some school of thought say it's cut back on dairy, ice cream, all those sugary right. things because sugar is inflammation. If your body doesn't recognize it as food, then, you know, the bad bacteria are happy. Yeah, we're fisting on all the sugar and right. the good bacteria is not doing the work that it needs to do. So there's some things that you can do to help, you know, just alleviate the, the, the symptoms that you're having. So stay hydrated, lots of fluids, you know, water. Um, if you're into um, essential oils, like the peppermint oils, that, mm -hmm. that's really good. Um, other things that you can do to just help open up those lungs, change your filter suddenly, that's a humidifier. Uh, let's see, any other tips that you have there to help with those symptoms as, as, as during that period? Take the days off that you need to take. Yeah, I know our our uh, our culture is oh I gotta work through my sickness. You're not helping anybody, and you're not helping yourself. If anything, you're yeah. kind of potentially prolonging your symptoms yeah. and then infecting yeah. other people. And I so I understand like, yeah, we gotta make the money. We gotta do this. But if mm -hmm. if your health is um, if you're not feeling well, take the days off that you need and make yeah. sure you sleep your twelve hours because your body will tell you we we are out for the rest of the few days, oh, <laughs> for yeah. the next few days. Yeah. And then, you know, again, you know, we're usually tempted on the breadwinner of the house. I have to work to bring money. But unfortunately, if you collapse and you just break down, then you're not going to help the home. You're not going to right. help the family. So we all need to always remember that. And certainly some of the additional things in terms of the immune system is, you know, the zinc. There is studies that have shown that zinc. Uh, you do need to ask your, you know, primary care provider what is the specific amount that you need. Right. Right about the vitamin D, you know, 10 to 2 p.m. is usually that period where you get the maximum amounts, 15, 20 minutes, um, just vitamin D helps to build your immune system. Um, there's the beta carotene that you see a lot in sweet potatoes and um, broccoli and the fruits and veggies. I think you can never go wrong with any of right. them. <laughs> you know, if you eat the rainbow, eat the colors, that definitely helps. Um, so yeah, so we said C, D, zinc, and you know the typical fruits and veggies suddenly so yeah so this has been great i hope that this has been helpful i don't know if there are questions please throw the questions at us um we've already mentioned some of our commonly asked questions i think there is one let me pull it up and see oh okay good question so the question is what causes the mucus to change colors yellow to green uh, you want to take that one <laughs> yeah bacteria Ooh. Those, yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, those, those buggers are smart. <laughs> it's like, uh -huh. yeah. So usually, like with the clear mucus, um, it's not inflamed or infected. I should say, 
uh, clear mucus is really not a sign of infection. Um, it can happen from the allergies we talked about, could happen from viruses. Uh, but yes, when it's changing to yellow and green, that's pus, pur purulent uh, material. And that is the body literally trying to fight the bacteria. And so it's the white blood cells, the bacteria all mixed in one. And that's what makes that pus, um, that, um, pus look. Same thing like with the, if you have an infection or a boil, if you were to, you know, um, pop it or see what comes out of it, it's usually a white um, drainage. And again, it's the white blood cells, the immune system cells, the bacteria fighting against each other. And that's what it looks like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. You don't want to get those things mad. You don't want to get the bad bacteria angry at all. But yeah, so suddenly if you start seeing the color change, you're just not getting better. Please, 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 please just seek help. Don't stay indoors and keep nursing it. We definitely want to distinguish when it's not getting better. Right. You know, the conservative management, when do you need to seek treatment? And certainly when you go to your doctor, um, just they might consider if, depending on what part of the body, if it's upper versus lower, they could do a chest x-ray. But again, if you're smoking, please stop smoking because that's just going to make it worse. It's not going to make it better at all. Uh, let's see if there's any other questions. Um, there is one commonly asked question. We talked about the vitamin C. Does it really help? We, um, Dr. Williams said that. We talked about the mucus. Uh, does it get thicker or not um, with dairy and the antibiotic? Uh, there is one that I've just recently, a patient was asking that um, when it comes to allergies, uh, there are things that they can use to, to just minimize it. I've seen and I've heard um, that prior to the season, you can, which depending on the state that you're at, you can have the honey, the Georgia, like I'm in Georgia, we're both in Georgia, like the Georgia honey, you know, would just help prime your body. Um, just a little teaspoon of that. I've seen some people do that and has worked. I've mm -hmm. never really ever been able to start before the season. So I haven't done that, but you know, th that, that, for some has helped significantly. So just getting yourself ready for that allergy season. And of course your shoes, making sure that you don't wear shoes in the house, especially on carpet, because you're take, bringing things into the house, right? So those would be some things that I would say that you can do um, doing the allergy season that can certainly help. And I've seen that it's helped. So that was a question that came up that what are some things that I can do to help? And then ceiling fan. A lot mm -hmm. of times people forget about that stain fan. Mm -hmm. And then you wake up, you find out that you're coughing more during in the night and first thing in the morning. But that's mm -hmm. because you're sleeping, all that dust, you know, has accumulated. And yes. you've, you know, so you definitely want to be very mindful of that. Yes. Well, I don't know if you have anything to add, Dr. Williams, before we begin to wrap up and definitely want to give you an opportunity to share about your, you know, your practice and um, how, if listeners want to get in touch with you. Yeah. So um, oh, I forgot about the honey. That is a great cough suppressant. So that is something that you can find in your cupboard and um, you can take that for a cough. Um, so yeah, so I have a um, concierge or direct primary care practice in Stockbridge. So I am south of Atlanta and our goal is to provide accessible, convenient care, personalized care to patients um, so that they are not having to wait months for an appointment. When they do have an appointment, um, there, there's no waiting room because you're going straight in, you're spending adequate time to be able to address your concerns, and then you have access, access to me to be able to ask your questions afterwards. Or if you have something urgent that comes up, like a cold or like allergies comes up, you don't have to spend um, hours in urgent care for something that we could help you with. And so, so that's my, um, that's why I started the practice. And that's my goal is to provide that to the community. Um, you can uh, find me at um, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, um, at doctor.notmiss. So doctor.notmiss, as well as my practice website, gatewaydirecthealth.com. Very good. Yes, and, and, that, and that's so important because we find that the emergency room, unfortunately, is so filled up and backlogged with people having cold that they think it's, you know, so, uh, you know, having that close relationship with your physician really, really matters. And um, it, it's so important that during this season that we, we 
connect ourselves with with the doctors that know us and have that relationship. Um, right. I, I something that we should mention is commonly asked question is the the vaccine, right? Oh, yes. So yeah, so flu shot, COVID shots. Um, <laughs> so when it comes to flu, I know there's a lot of controversy about it. In spite of whatever vaccine out there, what Dr. Williams and I are saying is that all that vaccine, whether you take it or not, is not going to make a difference if your health, if you're still smoking, right? If you're still, if you're not sleeping, if you're stressed, if you're not eating well, because right. that vaccine is just to supplement. It's not supposed to be the healer of all things. Let, let's right. always, let's just put that out there. Right. Um, you know, so, you know, all the anti-inflammatory herbs and spices, like we talked about the turmeric, I love turmeric, um, you know, the lemons, all those things, you do need to have those. Now, when we talk about vaccines, like for instance, the flu, I know there's some people that just genuinely, they can't take it because they just fall sick. But the thing is that they're not giving you the life flu vaccine, no virus, no, it's the dead. It's just like what, what Dr. Williams said, that when you take antibiotics, right? the body is so intelligent that it's like, Ooh, look at this. I need to find a way to, I have recognized it. I need to know when it comes again that I can guard against. And that's what the flu, any vaccine that you're getting, it's a dead, there are different types of vaccine, but we're not going to go into that part. But the summary of it is for the flu, it is a dead one that is there that your body forms <laughs> a, a protection against it so that when you do have the real thing your body can attack it much better it doesn't mean that you won't catch it but right. you minimize the effect so that's what the flu as well as the covid nobody's giving you life um <laughs> virus in your body yes. and i think yes. that's where the controversy is that people always feel like you know they're putting injecting things into our bodies but based on the research that we've seen and all the investigation and studies, that's not the case. Now, mm -hmm. I personally have had the flu shot. I do take it um, and I haven't had any side effects, but there are people that truly, you know, have side effects. Right. Um, now, as for the COVID, I don't know, what are your thoughts about COVID um, in terms of, did you have any reaction to any of those COVID vaccines when you took them then? The only thing was my arm was hurting, but okay. that's true with any vaccine. Mm -hmm. um, but to me, it was worth it because of the protection that um, I'm having my body make, right? Like I'm just helping my body say, hey, instead of catching COVID, how about we just like see a little part of it? Let's develop some antibodies so that if we do see it again, we have a defense already ready, mm -hmm. right? So, so, you know, personally, I think that vaccines are helpful. I think they, I think they've proven um, themselves to be helpful, especially when we see the number, um, how polio, you know, is, you know, it was gone anyway, but, you know, polio was, was gone. Um, the mumps and measles and rubella, they were, you know, they were um, on the way to er eradicating them. And so, um, yes, I know that it's new. And so that makes it feel unsafe or makes it feel like, okay, I should be apprehensive. And I understand that. I understand also how, you um, we're worried that, you know, pharmaceutical companies are trying to make money off of us. I, I get all of that. I get all of that. Um, but I just um, say that, hey, if this is something that can help me, let's just go ahead and do it. Let's try it. Yeah, yeah. And then, I, I mean, that was so well said. And the question is, is there a new COVID vax coming out? Huh. Have you heard about a new? I know today's the RSV, right? We, you talked about that at the beginning a little. Um, yes. We're hearing that there's a new, like I've seen patients where they tested negative for COVID. They don't have flu. Okay, what mm -hmm. is it? You know, and it's not allergies. Mm -hmm. So the question is the RSV. So, you know, I don't know when it comes to the, the standard ones. I, I've heard though that some of those, depending on the test that you're doing, just because it's negative, you might need to do a series of them, right? Before it comes back positive, because there's a, there's a period where it will, the, the viral load will show. Um, right. So just because it's negative, if you haven't, they say if it smells like, if it, if it sounds like a dog, it's a dog. I, I, that's my take on it. Now, whether right. they something else, coming around, I do not know. So right. I don't know what your thoughts about that. Have you heard of any new COVID vax? 
So yeah, there's like the new COVAX, uh, I think is quadrivalent, like it's just a little bit tweaked different mm -hmm. from the um, previous ones. And so they've discontinued the old ones because I guess they found that these are uh, more effective. But as far as new viruses, I haven't heard any, but you know, these viruses have been around for a long time. And I think it's recently that when we had COVID and flu tests, everyone's like, okay, I need to get tested to see if, what this is. But in actuality, a lot of these viruses, like we don't have tests for one and two testing doesn't necessarily make a difference because typically they do get better. They do get better. But what we found with COVID is like how, um, how deadly it was. So we we're like, all right, we, yeah, we, you know, this is something to definitely invest, but there are thousands, thousands of viruses that can cause respiratory symptoms. And so um, right now I don't know of a new virus but again, this could, like the symptoms that people are having, they test neck flu and COVID, this could be the same viruses that were here 20 years ago that we just, um, yeah, we just didn't test. Yeah, because we speak mostly of the most common ones, but it doesn't right. say that, you know. And what I found is from season to season, even with the flu shot, which we usually recommend somewhere around September to about March, mm -hmm. Every year they find that, oh, okay, they have to, you know, have a different kind of vaccine because the, the variant is stronger. And then the vaccine that they have needs to be able to match with what we have on ground. Mm -hmm. So there's going to, you know, we're in a world of lifelong learning. We, we keep doing yes. research to make things better, to make it adaptable to, to the human. And of right. course, to the virus, they try to get smarter and smart. So we are yes. the ones that we need to earn ourselves with everything that will build our immune system. There's just nothing better than saying, prepare yourself for battle. Um, very, very important. I think that, um, is it okay to take different vaccines at once, flu and pneumonia? Yeah, so you can take the COVID and the flu. Um, in terms of pneumonia, that's a good question. I'm so glad you asked that question. So pneumonia, I mean, they, they have, and that's just the beauty of technology and, and, and the health science, because you know, we used to have, you know, the two, the 13 and the 21. Now, the right. 23, now we have just right. that one. Right. The whole idea is just making the efficacy and all of that. So the question is who needs to get the, the pneumonia, you do have the one that you get in childhood and then you have the one when you're older. Certainly, if you have any chronic diseases, just like Dr. Williams said, you have to make sure that those are well controlled because those are the ones that your immune system is suppressed, the virus or the bacteria can overwhelm. So with right. the pneumonia, it depends on when you last got it will determine if you can get it with other things. That would be the best response that I can give you. But right. certainly you can get the COVID and the flu together. I don't know if you wanted to add to that in terms of the pneumonia. No, I, I agree. Definitely COVID and flu can go together and pneumonia depends on when's the last one, how many you need, all yeah. kinds yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah, definitely. Well, this has been great, don't you? Wouldn't you say? <laughs> yes, that was true. I learned something. <laughs> yeah, turmeric. And, and oh, yeah, same here. Yeah, I, you know, it's it's always good to have these conversations because that would also bring to my forefront what I need to do to protect myself and, and myself. Yes. Yeah, so I really hope that this has been helpful to all our listeners. Thank you all so very much for joining us. So as our time comes to a wrap. Again, we are here to serve you. We are here to provide information. Uh, we want you to stay healthy and well because you certainly deserve it. And we welcome your engagement and questions. So please stay in touch with the WCEG network. It's all about your optimal well-being. And as, I, as we pat today, I like to always leave a nugget with you. And this one says, good health is not something we can buy. However, it can be extremely valuable saving account, right? And I think this is so appropriate. It's a savings account, right? So if yes. we, you know, do all the things, you know, move, walk, sleep, reduce stress, it's a savings account that will serve you when you need it, right? And this is by Anna Wilson. So thank you again, Dr. Williams. I appreciate spending this time with you. And yes. We thank all our listeners. So we'll be back next month, um, the third Tuesday, same time, 6 p.m. And until then, we want you to take good care of yourself, right? Because you deserve it. Take care and God bless.